Hey guys, Caitlin here, and I'm a couple weeks into my fellowship now, and I've done multiple 12 hour shifts. And after all these shifts, I've realized how much medical information I've forgotten since I graduated PA school. It's been about three months since I graduated and to start of this fellowship, and I didn't think I would have forgotten a lot of stuff, but I have. So, for this video, I want to talk about the top 10 medical triads that you cannot miss in the emergency department. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is cauda equina syndrome, and this is mostly related to lower back pain. A lot of back pain isn't an emergent situation, but this particular syndrome is. If you remember from anatomy, the cauda equina is a bundle of nerve roots at the end of the spinal cord. Cauda equina syndrome is when these nerve roots become injured for some reason, the most common cause being a ruptured disc in the lumbar area. The triad for cauda equina syndrome is of course lower back pain, and that can shoot down into the lower legs, kind of like sciatic symptoms, saddle anesthesia, so Wherever you would sit on a saddle of a horse, that area of your body is very numb and not able to feel. And then the third thing is bowel or bladder dysfunction. The treatment for cauda equina syndrome is emergent spinal decompression in less than 48 hours. The next triad I want to talk about is Beck's triad. And these three symptoms arise when you have a pericardial effusion. And they are muffled or distant heart sounds, hypotension, and distended neck veins. The treatment for this is an emergent pericardial synthesis. If you suspect a pericardial effusion, you should order an ultrasound in the ED stat. And during the ultrasound, you should see fluid in the pericardial space, seen here under the letters of PE. The next triad I want to talk about is the triad for meningitis. And the three symptoms you might see here are a headache, fever, and nuchal rigidity. If your patient has all three of these symptoms, then I would suggest doing a lumbar puncture to evaluate the cerebral spinal fluid within. The fourth triad I wanna talk about is Cushing's triad. And you see this triad when a patient has an increased cerebral pressure inside their brain. The three symptoms you might see are bradycardia, a low respiratory rate, and hypertension. And I like to think of this triad as the opposite of what you might see with shock, and that is tachycardia, a high respiratory rate, and hypotension. The next triad I want to talk about is Charcot's triad, and you will see this with ascending cholangitis, and they are right upper quadrant tenderness, fever, and jaundice. And if there is any obstruction, then you might see Raynaud's pentad, which is the addition of Charcot's triad plus altered mental status and hypotension. The next triad I want to talk about is the reactive arthritis triad. And you will see this triad with people that have HLA B27 genes or they have chlamydia infections. And you will see urethritis, conjunctivitis, and arthritis. And I like to use the saying, can't pee, can't see, can't climb a tree to help me remember. So you can't pee because of the urethritis, you can't see because of the conjunctivitis, and you can't climb a tree because of the arthritis. The next thing I want to talk about is preeclampsia. And it's not usually associated with the triad, but I find that if you remember this triad, it will help you for test. So the three things I like to remember for preeclampsia are hypertension, edema in the lower extremities, and proteinuria. And the thing to remember with this is any pregnant patient coming to the ED with a high blood pressure, just remember to get a UA on them. Also, in pregnant patients, it's very important to treat even mild UTIs seen on a UA. Pregnant patients can have lots of complications from a UTI, so treating them, even if they don't even come in with the symptoms, is very important. The last three triads are triads that don't particularly pop up into the ED as much, but they definitely pop up into urgent care and family medicine, and also definitely pop up on your boards. 
The first one I want to talk about is Meniere's disease, and it has the triad of hearing loss, usually that's low frequency hearing loss, vertigo that tends to be episodic in nature, and then tinnitus, or otherwise ringing in the ears. Another triad that you might not see in the ED as much, but more often family practice, is the triad for endometriosis. And you will see dysmenorrhea, or a painful menstruation, dyspareunia, or painful sexual intercourse, or dyskesia, having a painful bowel movement. If you are wondering how endometriosis can cause painful bowel movements like I was, you can see from this picture all the red dots represent areas that endometriosis can affect, and there are multiple red dots surrounding the anal canal. The last triad I want to talk about is the triad for a pheochromocytoma. A pheochromocytoma is a neuroendocrine tumor in the medulla of the adrenal glands. This tumor tends to secrete high amounts of catecholamines, mostly norepinephrine and sometimes epinephrine. In this picture, the pheochromocytoma is labeled as a star, S being the spine, left kidney, right kidney, and L stands for liver. And I like to group this triad into the three P's, and they are palpitations, perspiration, and pain in the head. And that's just how I like to remember the triad. But just keep in mind that the most common finding of a pheochromocytoma is hypertension. And that's it, guys. The top 10 triads, in my opinion, that you do not want to miss in the ED or on your boards. I'll see you next Wednesday.